Oh yeah. <laughs> that was totally worth it. Like this is something you can only do with UDIMS pretty much. Painting across two separate textures. I'll set the generated type to color grid so that we can see the resolution very clearly. And most importantly, we need to check tiled. Oh, so what you're saying is I make that 4K. And by the way, thank you guys about reminding me that I can type things in like this to get that 4K or 8K. Not quite sure how this whole thing is supposed to work. Why is the texture supposed to be tiled? I still don't see any UDIM options in here. Oh, that's where it is. Image. You add a tile. Okay. Yeah, I guess. The worst color to use, but... <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Borodante, and welcome back to a little extra episode with uh, Daddy Long Arms here. And it's gonna be about converting our model from being two separate meshes into one mesh that's using two UDIM tiles. This is gonna be the first time I'm doing this, so this is gonna be just not a tutorial at all, just a whole lot of trying to do it. <laughs> So if any of you guys don't know, UDEM tiles are the kind of UV mapping technique where you have like, instead of one square with all your polygons on it, you get two, three, 10, 50, and each and one of them can have different resolutions and be applied to different polygons. So for instance, I want my hand here with the, with the wrist and everything this whole thing it's a separate mesh i already joined them into one object but they still use like two separate materials and everything and i want to convert that by moving these polygons onto a second tile right here all right i can't see anything because i chose black color for these textures but never mind i still have a whole lot of questions about this for instance, my material is applied a certain way to my object. Like, for instance, this is from the hand, right? So this part, the upper part. We can see how somewhere around here, not very noticeably, things just completely change from one texture to another because it's a different material and I couldn't paint or uh, simulate some kind of textures in Substance Painter on both of these parts seamlessly because you can only do one material at a time. And since I wanted to have one 4K texture for this part of the arm and another 4K texture for the whole rest of the arm right here, I decided to use like two separate materials, which is something I'm gonna be working with in the game anyway. As I mentioned in the previous episode, I knew about UDIMS, but I decided to still go with this uh, two separate materials approach because it will be a modular character with infinitely long arm. And so this portion right here will be repeating itself over and over again. Therefore, it will still be modular, it will still be a separate object, so there is no real need for UDEMs in the actual game. Not to mention, they don't really use UDEMs in games. But what's good about this approach is that, presumably, I'll have kind of like two UV maps two UV tiles in one UV map, that uh, in here there will be one 4K texture, in here will be another 4K texture, but they will all be assigned inside of one material, somehow. Now, this part I figured out, but how do I define that here? Like, for instance, here's the textures for the hand part. And here are the textures for the arm part. Uh, let's say I combine them into one material. How do I, like, Here's UV, how do I define which tile of UDEM? I've never seen any interface where I could specify a UDEM tile anywhere. How is that supposed to work? Also, thank you, Siji Cookie, for your nice and clean video about UDEMs in Blender 2.82. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, join the two meshes since I I mean, I already joined them, I need to merge their vertices, right? So like this, selected both, merge by distance. Should be all good by now, yep. One mesh. Still two materials though. 
So yeah, as far as I understand, we need to change our textures in a way that they will be a two tile textures, including information from both the hand and the arm. Oh, interesting. So now I'm gonna remove this arm material. So at the moment, they all, like, even though they're laid out on two separate tiles, both tiles show, like, the same textures that I specified here. When in reality, we need them to have some kind of Udem tiles situation. <laughs> this is a very exciting puzzle. Okay, I think I figured it out. So what we actually need to do is we need to rename our texture files here. And we should rename them like instead of M1 hand and M1, I guess this is actually arm. So naming is very weird. Uh, the one that's character 001, that's arm. They should be called like all of the same, but this will be 1001 and this will be 1002. And somehow if you follow that naming convention, Blender would just pick it up into a node of a texture. So I don't need to actually paste in anything else in here. I just need to have UVs that look like this. And I didn't even really need like a picture here or anything, so no need for that in the UV editor. What you should actually do is when you start working, you go right here. Initially, it just looks like this, so it will be kind of vague to figure out how exactly to put these islands right here to fit them perfectly into a second tile. You just uh, go to this, oh, what is this button anyway? Show overlays, the master card button. <laughs> And yeah, you just add tiles right here to the viewer. That's all you need to do. That way you just define that certain polygons are taking the second tile in the potential UDIM texture. And so I'm gonna rename stuff right now and we'll see what happens next. So something like this, I assume. And this is the same, but 1002. And that's how things should go for the rest of this. Okay, let's see if this works. So I understand we simply go ahead and like just open it like this. I don't have to detect UDIMs. Yeah, do that. Are you detecting it? Doesn't seem like it. I guess I didn't follow the naming convection, con con convection <laughs> properly. Oh. It actually should start with 101. Damn, I'm gonna have to redo everything. Should I use like Total Commander for that? So let's grab all of that and batch rename there. So what I need you to do... Oh, that's cool. Okay, that. And at the beginning, I need to add this part and this you should count uh, I'm not sure what this means. <laughs> maybe, maybe like this. What is the result? Oh, and there's an extra, extra thing. I think I did it. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know you could uh, name like characters from the end and characters from beginning. You should write it like that in order to make it work. So now I positioned my UDIM tile numbers at the beginning of the file. Uh, hopefully it'll work. So you, that doesn't seem right. UDIM tiles still doesn't look right. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem to grab the thing still. Do I remove the spaces and replace them with underscore things? I mean, let's give it a try. So it seems like Blender may have changed its naming convention for UDIMs and it may be like this at the end actually. But didn't I like try that? <laughs> Pretty sure I did. But maybe underscores are necessary or something. Oh, there we go. Now that looks like someone recognized the UDIM texture. Yeah, it's like it totally renamed it itself. There we go. I wonder why Cycles is just showing me the black arm. 
Cool. All right, so this is now one material with two textures applied across the mesh. How cool is that? All right, let's do the rest. Who are you? Subsurface, AKA scattering. All right. Why is everything black? What did I do? Wait, oh my God, I, it's just, when did this happen? Why is it disconnected? Jeez, I spent like a considerable amount of time trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, I learned a lot of cool things today. So to recap and to like make some kind of tutorial out of it, if you have two separate materials covering the same object or whatever, and you want to merge those two materials into one, if you decided to switch to UDIMS, first of all, delete material of the secondary part, like remove it from your mesh completely. Right here, you used to have two materials, now you only have one. And then go into this material and replace all the textures by removing this one and then opening a new one and you have to rename your textures this way. So this will be the texture of the first material for the base color. And this will be the texture from the second material for the base color. So they need to have this 1001 at the end and 1002 at the end. I'm not sure why this didn't work at the first try. I think that's because I was using spaces and apparently if you're switching to UDEMS, you need to use underscores pretty much consistently at this point. This definitely works. So identical names, I don't think they have to be specifically base color or whatever, because I'm using like normal OGL for normal maps, which is a very custom name anyway. So apparently you can name it any way you want, but the second one should be named the same way with 1002 at the end. And then if you have the third material, 1003. And then when you open it, make sure you have this detect UDIMS checked in here. And when you open the image, you'll see that the name of the file looks like this with UDIM at the end. And this will be selected as well and you'll see two tiles with two textures in here. And yeah, another important thing, if you just have two objects without any preparation for UDIMs, you will need to select all the UV islands of that second material and move them from here, they would look somewhat like this, like both parts of the mesh laying together on the first tile. So you select all of them, probably using uh, the viewport or something, and then you hit G, X, 1, and enter, which means we moved the selection one meter in the X axis. And that's it. Now, the next stage, let's check out how this thing performs in Substance Painter. I assume we're gonna have to like texture this as a new object. I won't be able to like replace because we changed our things a lot, I assume. So I'm gonna export everything, not everything. I just need to export the mesh really because textures are already prepared. So FBX. Now I'm gonna give it a try and see what happens if I re-import, like reload the mesh in the original project in Substance. Okay, so I renamed it. Now let's try re-importing. Well, wow, it's blacked out for a second. Okay, now we can see it replaced it with one mesh. The second one is gone. Same as any ability to like apply texture to it. Oh, cool. So that's the second tile, but it's using the same texture. I can't really even paint in here. Not using UV tile workflow. Yeah, so you have to, like, that's one thing you can't just update your object with. You will have to restart. Not a problem, I pretty much finished my texturing, and now I'll just need to work on the seam a little bit. I'll do some kind of basic smudging around the seam, I guess. Maybe something else, I don't know. Use UV tile. Okay, let's select our new object. Oh yeah, so now Substance supports painting across tiles. It wasn't the case before. In this video by CG Cookie, they mentioned that back when that video was made, it was still not, not really there, but it was coming soon as a feature to Substance Painter. So I'm lucky it's already here. Now I'm gonna add all the textures like this. I wonder if it'll automatically figure out something about them. Okay, that's looking good, but very white. 
Oh, that's just lighting. <laughs> that's nothing. It didn't connect anything automatically. Oh, so that's what it looks like with the UDIMs. Uh, we need OpenGL, actually. So it's supposed to be loading it in right now. There it is. All loaded. Yeah. Cool. So I wonder if I'm importing like all the textures. I put the normal map here, which actually I shouldn't. Yeah, I shouldn't be doing that because I actually uh, I actually want to modify that normal map. So I need it uh, in here. So I add this fill layer and use all the channels. So that's it, right? One, two, three, and four. Yeah, everything's in. Yeah, looking pretty cool. And looking pretty cool in here as well. Awesome. Okay, now, how do you, let's say, if I add like paint to this fill layer, I should grab my tablet. All right, here we are. The moment of truth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That was totally worth it. Like, this is something you can only do with UDIMs, pretty much. Painting across two separate textures. You have to have them inside of one material. Now, I need some kind of special brush, I assume. Clone brush. How does this thing work, anyway? So yeah, this is not doing it, and if I like create a layer on top, it also won't be doing it. And it's not gonna be able to like grab all the colors from the layers below. It's not a thing. So how the hell do I add a texture that I imported? Oh, you can also select tiles of UDIMs when you are masking by geometry. Yeah, UV tiles or mesh names, depending on like what you wanna use. Oh, thank you, Nina Shaw Game Art. I think I found exactly what I needed. So apparently, I need to just use the pass-through blending mode. I wonder if it'll work here. So all of this, like I create this paint for my base fill layer, and I select just pass-through for all of them. I never really thought about like, what the hell is this pass-through mode anyway? And there we go, we now added like this paint layer, like it's kind of a layer, although I don't quite know what this means, like how is this different from having just a separate paint layer on top? But yeah, this layer is like empty and because it's in pass-through mode for all of its channels, whatever you do in here, you're kind of like doing it to everything that's underneath, apparently. That's actually super useful. Something I actually wanted to do before, I'm obviously not editing one of the things. I guess I didn't... Yeah, I just didn't select them in here. So when I paint, I need to paint on roughness, normal map, and scattering. There we go, now I'm blending all the stuff together, which is kind of trippy actually, to smear around the whole material with its roughness and normals. <laughs> kind of cool. This is awesome, like, this is it, this is something I really wanted to see a while ago. That means, like, this is the workflow to hide the seams. I always thought, like, how do you at all do anything to the seams? You know, if you import a texture, then you can't paint on the fill layer, but then the next layer, separate from it, won't be able to actually smudge or clone that kind of stuff, because it's only grabbing inside of the layer but pass-through mode is exactly what turns this empty layer into exact copy of what's underneath. Okay, now to figure out the last thing. How the hell do I move this uh, reference point of this clone brush to a different place? There you go. Thank you, Nina Shaw Game Art again, because you have to hit V key and click left mouse button to select source location. I'm not closing that video just yet. So, V, oh, hold V and click. Awesome. Man, this is so cool. There won't be a single seam anywhere, ever, unless I get bored with this. 
Yeah, by the way, this is not even the the seam that I uh, couldn't fix without UDEMs or anything. This is just the seam of this um, mud dirt material that I applied. It has its own like some kind of seams. But yeah, let's fix the, the main thing. Oh, it's actually projecting like in 3D, like that rectangle there. So it's not just in screen space, although kind of is, then it loses the place to project from <laughs> interesting it doesn't go further behind the horizon i mean i can live with that it's still really cool that it's not just using whatever it sees on the screen but actually curves somehow i gotta say v is not the most convenient shortcut in terms of the finger placement i'm kind of hating how a lot of the times i make a brush stroke and it's like moving the thing a little bit around every time I make a brush stroke, so everything is kind of slightly smeared all the time when I paint it. Oh, if you're using scattering on your brush, it will also make the cloning thing very messy. Maybe that's why I was having some kind of smearing, because there's a little bit of position jittering. Now it's still moving things around, even when all the jitters are at zero. Okay, cool. Well, here we are then. And what's also awesome is that I can, for instance, I remember I had some very rough brush strokes with the um, fingerprint brush in here. I can actually go ahead and like use only the normal map channel and use those jittering things to kind of <laughs> get rid of it. Like it's kind of the same as using the finger tool, I guess, if I do it this way, but I don't want to select the brush again. Okay, cool. So I went all over the place, fixed all the seams that I ever noticed, and we have our daddy long arms with no seams and any problems. And when I export textures from here, it will be again a double set of textures. So the hand will have its own set of textures with the 1001 at the end and the arm will be 1002 at the end. And then I can just rename them whatever I want, separate these two parts of the model again and use them as separate skeletal meshes in actual Unreal Engine. But yeah, I guess this is it. Was a very fun experiment, super awesome to learn about UDEMs and how they're actually useful in a situation like this. If you guys want to see some cool renders of this and all the other characters that I've done for the game so far, you can support me on Patreon in the The Game tier. The link to my Patreon page is in the end of this video. You'll get a bunch of cool cycles renders of all the models I create in each video. And also you'll get to see your name in the final credits of the game. But for now this is it. Tell me guys what you think and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! Oh my god, I can actually keep adding things under this masking paint layer that I use with pass-through and it will automatically be fixing anything I put under it. That's so cool, because all of these brush strokes are live. That is amazing.